This is Kyle de Lima with Trinico Warriors in collaboration with SPA, Students Protecting Animal Rights here today for the public consultation on the Dangerous Dogs Act. We're here to see exactly what the government is planning with regards to this law and what sort of measures are going to be put in place to protect the animal as well as the human beings that are concerned in these situations. So let's see what they have to say. Minister of Local Government, the Honorable Chandri Sharma, Chairman of the Law Reform Commission, Mr. Samraj Haripal, Senior Legal Research Officer, Reform, Law Reform Commission, Ms. Vivian Edwards, Sales and Marketing Manager, Bemco. Mr. Mark Mute, President of the TTSPCA, Ms. Sita Corovilla, President of Trinidad and Tobago Caribbean Veterinary Association, Dr. Curtis Padilla, Canine Activist Chris Marson, Vice President of the FCRTT, Mr. Roger Barkley, Executives of the FCRTT, Member Club, all stakeholders, members of the media, members of the public. On behalf of the Federation for Canine Registration of Trinidad and Tobago and Purina, I would like to welcome each and every one of you to today's proceedings. The reason why we are present here today is because of three main issues. One, public safety. Two, public health. Three, animal welfare. The FCRT supports enforceable, non-discriminatory legislation to govern the ownership of dogs. We believe that dog owners and breeders should be responsible for their dogs. We support legislation that, one, establish fair process by which dogs are identified as dangerous based on stated measurable actions. Two, penalize irresponsible owners. Three, as a well-defined method for dealing with dogs proven to be dangerous. We believe that if necessary, dogs proven to be dangerous or out of control may need to be humanely destroyed. The Federation for Canine Registration of Trinidad and Tobago strongly opposes any legislation that determines a dog to be dangerous based on a specific breed. Currently in the UK, Liberal Democrat Lord Redisdale has put forward a private member's bill which would repeal existing legislation and replace it with a regime putting greater responsibility of dog owners for their pet's behaviour. There is proven failure in the UK's 1991 Dangerous Dog Act, which is rooted in the fact that it was drafted in a highly political, knee-jerk response to a number of incidents similar to our Dangerous Dog Act of 2000. Politicians should learn from these mistakes. The problems caused by dangerous dogs will never be solved until dog owners appreciate that they are responsible for the actions of their animals, rather than singling out individual breeds. It is time for responsible pet ownership. The Act did not cater for the care and safety of dogs, nor did it deal with the lack of control of dogs by irresponsible ownership in the care and control of dogs, and there was a complete lack of offences and penalties for irresponsible ownership. Most of you all recall there was a recent incident where a young child was attacked and the mother was prosecuted or the individual who was the owner of the dog was prosecuted and was fined $200, I think. That was within the last three weeks to a month. Breed-specific legislation essentially bans or restricts certain types of dogs based on their appearance because they are perceived as being dangerous breeds of dogs or types of dogs. Breed-specific legislation applies only to dogs of a certain appearance, not to any and all dogs. It does not take into account how the owner has raised, trained, or managed the dog. It does not take into account the dog's actual behavior. And the 2000 legislation imposed breed-specific restrictions on the breeds defined as mentioned above, the Fila Brizziaro, the Japanese Tosa, and the Pitbull Terrier. And we have now the benefit of a lot of information coming from other jurisdictions, Spain, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, various states in the United States of America, where over the years in which the breed-specific legislation model has been used, there has been a general consensus 
that that legislation has not worked as effectively, has not been as efficient in ensuring public safety. And that is something when we take account of the fact that we now find ourselves in a position where um, the powers that be are considering introducing legislation. Well, as the chairman indicated, we are very, very interested in what is happening. And local government has a responsibility, and it intends in keeping with the law to discharge that responsibility. Uh, one of the provisions in the Constitution is the security of people. Did they think of dogs then? They did not. So dogs came much later. In all countries, gun, there's gun control. You, you don't want everybody to have a gun. Or you want a process to be engaged in persons receiving a gun. The same thing for owning a motor car. There's a responsibility and there's a process to get a car as well. You have to pass a regulation. You know what you have to do. In the same way, we have to make sure what the, the framers of the Constitution intended, that the protection of people must be number one. One of the things we have done at local government, the law says that when you capture the stray dogs, you can destroy them. And we have since changed that to make sure that they can go to one of the uh, clubs or, or, or association that takes care of them and we, we attempt to assist them financially and otherwise. I am speaking on behalf of the Animal Welfare Network and the Trinidad and Tobago Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. And my presentation is based on a position paper that we um, presented to the Law Reform Commission. Because of the high incidence of crime in the country, there are a lot more households that keep dogs for security that maybe would not have had dogs if the situation was different. So in other words, there are many people who keep dogs who don't really particularly care about the dogs, but their concern is more one of security. There's also been a great increase in the unregulated use of dogs by security food. We have a large stray and roaming dog population that's implicated in disease and parasite transmission. The dogs pose a public nuisance in terms of noise in neighborhoods, um, going into garbage, and there are also periodic attacks on livestock, adults, and children. The DSPCA has taken in an average of 8,000 unwanted or stray dogs every year. Due to the lack of regulation, it's very difficult to do anything about the situation. And as we know, the existing Act basically serves only to authorize the local corporations to remove stray dogs from the road. One of the recent attacks did not actually involve any of the breeds listed in the, in the legislation. We are concerned that trying to place a limited act like this current Dangerous Dogs Act that we're debating on the situation in Trinidad is like putting a very small plaster on a very big wound. Many of the current owners or backyard breeders will be unable to comply with the requirements and will, of, of the legislation in its existing form, and they will either keep the animals hidden or dispose of them. And we deal on a daily basis practically with cases of abuse and ill treatment of pit bulls. And the numbers have increased quite drastically over the past two months um, since the issue became topical again. These are recent cases that we've been getting in. And I say, if you come in to the shelter now, we have so many more pit bulls even looking for homes than we've had before. But a lot of them are coming in in terrible condition. And this is, this is very, these are the very recent cases we've been getting. In practice, I'm sorry that the Minister of Local Government has left, because in practice, there is no government institutional framework and no physical infrastructure human or financial capacity at this time to absorb these animals or to handle the situation humanely. These are some of the comments and the suggestions from the Trinidad and Tobago Veterinary Association. The Dangerous Dogs Act in its current form is really too breed specific and it does not really address the wider issue of responsible owners. We think that utilizing 
desirable features of the current act together with improvements should lead to a new act perhaps entitled something like the Responsible Dog Ownership Act. Much of this information we have already forwarded to the Office of the Attorney General. We believe that a negative or reactive negative responses against particular breeds should not be really the motivating factor in amending this act. But non-biased information based on informed observations, research, and non-emotive data 